Hello! In this video and this performance task, we are going to be modeling um, an arch, either the arch of a bridge or the arch of a building of some kind. And so you're going to take this picture, you're going to put it into GeoGebra, and then you are going to write an equation using the factored form that we've been using to make a parabola fit that arch. So the first thing you got to do is search for a arch or a bridge or something in uh, Google or here I've got Bing and look for a picture. So I found a good one right here that I'm going to do. So your picture needs to be head on. You don't want to do something like this where your arch is at an angle because that won't fit the math very well. You want something head on um, for your picture. So I'm going to grab this picture. So right click on it, copy it, and they're going to paste that into GeoGebra. So let me show you how to do that. So here I am in GeoGebra. You're going to go to a different part. You're not going to click on start graphing. There's another option right here called GeoGebra Classic. It gives you a few more options. That's the one that we want to use there. So I'm going to click on GeoGebra Classic. It should look pretty similar once it pops up here. Let me close some of these menus. Um, but you have a few more options up here at the top left that you want to use. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paste my picture into GeoGebra. So Control V pastes my picture into GeoGebra. But for me to see this uh, graph and the graph lines, you're going to turn it transparent. So to do that, right click on the picture then you go down to settings all right and then we want color and under color there's this thing called opacity that's whether it is translucent or opaque and so i'm going to lower that somewhere around halfway and once you get to about halfway you can still see the picture but now you can see through it to the graph lines behind it so close out that menu so now what we're going to do is we're going to position this arch on the x-axis. The bottom of my arch here and here are going to be my x-intercepts. And you can pretty much put it wherever you want. I'm going to put this corner right on the 2 is where I'm looking. So the edge of my arch, the bottom of my arch, is that x-intercept right there. And then my other one, I'm going to fudge this a little bit so it doesn't quite line up with the 9, but it's pretty close. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to grab this B value right here, and I'm going to move my picture until it lands basically perfectly on the 9. There we go. I didn't move it very much. Don't move your arch very much to get it to fit onto a nice number. Um, you don't want to mess up your curve too much. All right, so that gives me an arch, a parabola that is just about perfect for me to model. And so the, the easy part, I can do some of my equation right now. Y is equal to, so to get an x-intercept of positive 2, I need one factor to be x minus 2. And to get the other one, to get an x-intercept of 9, I need one factor to be x minus 9. And so if I hit enter on that, you see now I've got a parabola that hits at the 2 and at the 9. But it definitely does not follow the curve of this arch. Um, it's facing the wrong direction. And so we need to change this formula somehow to make it fit this arch here. So that's the new part here. That's our extension for this performance task. So let me show you what we're going to do there. Here is the math that you're going to do. So I've got my x-intercepts, x equals 2 and x equals 9. That got me this first part of the equation right here, the x minus 2 and the x minus 9. The way we're going to change the angle or the stretch of this graph is to get an a value that will stretch or shrink this parabola vertically to fit my arch. And for that, you need to find the vertex of your parabola. All right, so I'm going to go back to my 
arch over here. I need the vertex of this arch, which is this up here. So in our um, toolbox up here, there is a point right here. So I'm going to click on that point. Um, I just want the point selection here. And I'm going to put a point at the vertex of my arch. That's the very, very top. All right. And I'm going to come up here and grab the arrow so I can move that point around. So I come up here to the arrow, the top left. And I'm going to move that around because I, I missed a little bit. So somewhere in there is the very top of my arch. And it gives me that. That's point C over here on the left. It tells me that point C is 5.5 comma 1.8. So you want to move it around. You can round these numbers a little bit so that they're nicer to work with. Um, but this is pretty good, just one decimal point, 5.5 comma 1.8. So I'm going to use those numbers in my calculation. So my vertex here you can see is 5.5 comma 1.8. So here's the math you have to do to find this A value that will stretch your graph correctly. First, you take the x value of your vertex and you plug it in. So I'm going to put the x values right here. You can see the 5.5 went in for x here and it went in for x here. The y value, my 1.8, goes in for the y value. There's my 1.8. So your numbers will, of course, be different, but you plug in the x's and you plug in the y's. Now we have an equation. With only one variable, we should be able to solve it. So we're just going to do the order of operations. We're going to solve this equation for a. So first, I can do the parentheses. So I did 5.5 minus 2. That gave me 3.5. And over here, 5.5 minus 9 gave me negative 3.5. And I believe those two numbers will always be the same. I don't think that's coincidence. One of them will be positive and one of them will be negative. Or at least they should be close. All right, keep going. Next, for the order of operations, I can take these two 3.5s, multiply them together. So 3.5 times 3.5 is 12.25, and a positive times a negative is a negative. Now, careful that while that is a negative, this is not subtraction. This is a times this negative 12.5. Well, if I want to get a by itself, I have to do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. So I divided both sides of my equation by 12.25. Divide both sides. So I did this on a calculator, of course. 1.8 divided by 12.25 is, well, negative 12.25 is 0.147. So a positive divided by a negative, my a value is negative. Hopefully that makes sense because we have to flip this parabola upside down and a negative value will reflect it. And so now that I have my a value, I can now complete my equation. So here is my completed equation that should give me a perfect parabola to match that picture. So let's type that in and see. So y equals negative 0.147, parentheses, x minus 2, x minus 9. And look at that. I'll erase the other one. That fits my arch almost perfectly. So that's the math I'd like you to be able to do. You will then um, snip this and paste it into the Word document, and you'll also take a picture of the math on your paper and snip and paste that into page two. Use your laptop to take a picture of it, and you can insert it there. Good luck.